Hey guys, Philosopher here, and today I have the debut of my DD5 Theory infographic. So this is the uh, new version of the infographic that it got, you know, got a lot of attention, the DD4 Theory one. That's actually when I started content creation. That was my first ever infographic, uh, and I've updated it for DD5. Um, and, I, and I will just say uh, as a starting point that this uh, DD5 infographic draws heavily uh, from the experiences not only of my of my experiences uh, but also uh, uh, for from uh, Than Thanos for nothing who finished second and then I've gotten some uh, you know been watching uh, from a from uh, from a distance and getting some feedback of what dog congratulations to dog of being the fifth person it's been this amount of time I mean I finished I think the first three people finished in just uh, we we finished what a week uh, you know within a week we the three of us finished. And then it took some time here for others to finish. And you can see we have this, this staggering. And I know some of you are telling me, well, wait, philosopher, do I even need to worry about DD5? Uh, what's like, why even bother? And I guess that this is what I would say. First of all, I know that teal gear is very tight right now. But if you plan carefully, you can get through with a lot less teal gear than others. Okay. I, I was very, I was much, I'm much more of a budget uh, than, let's say, Tadano was. And I was able to, with use a lot less teal gear to get to this to a similar result. Obviously, he finished ahead of me and should be congratulated on his win, uh, his victory. But I, you know, you can I think you know make some some choices that are going to help you get through. We're going to talk about that and we're going to go through the characters. The other thing I would just say though, and, and I get asked this a lot. I'm going to do another video on this, but I will just say that. You know, I get asked all the time, is Dormammu even worth bothering with? And the answer is yes. I mean, he's really fantastic character. Uh, I'm convinced that right now the, he's the best single character in the game. I think he's going to, hey, as a kid, that's going to last a long time. He basically gets your your team to uh, uh, two lives, essentially, which really means that when, as new characters get introduced to the game, he can work with those characters and res those characters uh, and so he will scale a little bit uh, with the uh, characters that, you know, come to the game after him. But let's just talk. I'm going to go right into the infographic and talk a little bit about it. One thing I will just say to you is that there's one difference here that I want you to um, <clears throat> that I want you to uh, take into account, which is that this time you're not just this is not just about a particular unique. This is actually about gear in general. So let's. Let's start with these reflections at the top. I will just tell you guys that these, uh, and I still have December on here. I actually did this in late December. I'm releasing this early January, but I'm just going to roll with it so Punk doesn't have to redo the do the infographic. Um, but here's what I would say. These these things are important. People often don't read these, uh, but this is, these are the two most important things I would have you take into uh, account. So first of all, DD5 is easier than DD4 was when it was released. I am convinced of that. I I, I was the fourth person to con complete DD4 and I was the third person to complete DD5. So very similar in terms of when I did it. I wasn't, you know, tr coming to DD4 late in the game. And I yes, DD4 got a lot easier recently. So if you're if you're like, well, I completed DD4 last month and I was one-shotting all the notes. Well, it wasn't like that at the beginning. And I think DD5 is even easier. Um, now, this doesn't mean it, there won't be some challenges. There won't be there won't be some difficult nodes. But and certainly, if your your goal is to one shot everything, that's not going to happen. But in terms of getting through it, I think you know you can focus on the characters. In my opinion, I think for most players, this is the right strategy. Focus on the characters who will help you the most outside of DD5. Okay taking into account their gear requirements. So that's the important thing. So what I would just say is, and I know some of you, I already hear, you know, see people as I'm making this video saying, well, wait, the first few notes seem kind of tough. Well, yeah, but those are the toughest notes for a while and you could use all your characters. I, I wouldn't f worry too much about it. I mean, one thing that I do want to say is since Teal Gear is so tight, rushing through like the first three notes, just so you can sit around and wait for more Teal Gear makes absolutely no sense. Don't be in a hurry to rush through the, to to you know uh, get the best super team together to one shot nodes when you don't even have the the gear to get your team up past those three nodes right. So what I would say is the gear requirements are important, and because 
you have all teal gear, you really need to track your gear carefully. I have uh, in my Discord, which is linked below, I have a, a spreadsheet uh, that in the DD5 resources section that you can use to um, track your gear. I use a, a different uh, but similar spreadsheet to track my gear. Uh, and I, what I found the bottlenecks were, were at the time, things like health catalysts were a huge bottleneck. So, you know, the origin gear is a huge bottleneck. So the, the nodes where you can farm the, uh, the, the, uh, the catalysts got added very shortly before DD5 opened. So these, these here, which I still farm uh, very regularly every day to make sure I'm building up my, you know, building up my hoard of, <coughs> of teal gear uh, to save for the future. But you know, if you know, depending if you haven't been farming these, you may find that to be the bottleneck, like health and damage catalyst. Certainly, that the origin gear is a, a, like the arcane powders and things like a split X gene. That stuff can be a bottleneck. So you have to look at these individual characters and see what they take, because some characters, for example, will take zero health catalysts but a lot of damage catalysts. That's how Icarus and Cersei are: no health catalyst. There's other characters that need tons of health catalysts and no damage. And so if you take a bunch of characters that only need health or that only need damage, you could run out. And similarly, and that's why I say this is reflection too. Track your gear carefully and choose characters that use less gear pieces than you're missing. Balance your choices among each of the five origins as much as possible. In other words, to give you an example, I have people in my Discord all the time suggest, hey, I've got these this amazing lineup for DD5 and like half of it is Mystic. Well, I think Tadano did something like that where he went heavily in Mystic, but you have to spend a lot more, or or if you're not spending, wait a lot longer to get through because you're getting all five origins at, in roughly equal quantities. So you want to take some bio, some tech, some mystic, some mutant, et cetera, so that some skill, so that this way you can get through in a reasonable amount of time and use the gear that you are getting for for free from the uh, from the raid no uh, from the raid orbs. All right, let's go through each of the. Let's go through each of the sections and talk about the characters. So what I have here, it says here is gear, teal gear slots. We really debated uh, how to show gear here because you can't list all the gear on an infographic like this. Obviously, uniques matter as well, but that's a whole other. And there are other infographics that list uniques. But when we're talking about, uh, for example, when we're talking about gear slots, what, what we mean is this. When you look at a character like here's Silver Surfer, he's he's got a lot of slots that require you to have teal gear. So it makes him expensive to gear, but he's got one orange slot only. Whereas if you go to a character like Wolverine, look, he's got two blue gear spots, you know, so he's only I think he's only got three slots that are teal gear. So that makes him cheaper. That's orange. So it, it, he has only three slots. Of teal gear versus five, which makes them cheaper to gear to gear overall. Okay, now, so let's go through city. These are characters that I think are reasonable type choices. Now, what I like about the web warriors is that they're cheap to gear. I don't think that their kits make them perfect for uh, dark dimension, but I think that they will <coughs> perform well enough. And their gear tier is cheap in terms of the, the gearing costs. I'm sorry, I'm sick, so <clears throat> forgive me for that. Obviously, the high performers here are Cloak and Dagger. <clears throat> but the issue with Cloak and Dagger is they're Mystic. They're Mystic and Cloak is a Miasma character. <clears throat> and there's a lot of other great Miasma characters. And so <clears throat> if, you are, if you're bringing in Cloak... And you're trying to want to bring in Doom and War Adam Warlock and these other characters, you're going to find yourself in a spot where you may have a Miasma Crunch. <clears throat> so, with these two characters, Cloak and Dagger, I think you can bring in a lot of any real assortment of other characters and do okay enough. Cloak and Dagger can drag you through these nodes. If you can't bring both Cloak and Dagger in, just be just be aware that Dagger performs way worse without Cloak. I did a lot of testing <clears throat> before the race started to see if I could get away without bringing Cloak once I misclicked and, and, and equipped Adam Warlock and lost that, the Miasma. And the answer is no. I was not able to, you know, Dagger does not perform nearly as well without Cloak. Cloak does better without Dagger than vice versa. They do better, much better as a pair. You may wonder, why do I have these two characters here in cheaper options? Well, 
one thing I'll just tell you, these I seriously consider for the race bringing these options in because neither of these characters take uh, health catalysts. And they're both cheap in terms of other types of gear. And they're both in, in Origins, tech and bio, that it's hard to find characters uh, for. So, And they're okay-ish. They're filler characters. But if you're trying to get through, you know, I felt for myself, at least this is a good war defense team. I, I was racing before the Web Warriors are here. So I literally brought in the two symbiotes, Cloak and Dagger, and Misty. And I had originally planned not to bring in SSM, but instead to bring in Luke Cage to save some gear. Okay. <laughs> Shang-Chi is a great choice, but he's a war defense character. And I know a lot of people, including myself, I use him in one node use him for raids, but he's not vital. He's kind of like the fifth skill character will be replaced as soon as we get a better skill character to go with Secret Avengers plus Kestrel. For global, I think the obvious choice is to bring in Secret Avengers. I, I brought in all three of them. They're very low gear requirements overall, and they synergize well, and they do fine. Some people spend a lot to bring in Doom. He's a miasma character. He's expensive to gear. He's half mystic, so that's expensive. And then you've got these cheaper options here. And I think they're very great options because they're all in a top war offense team, right? Weapon X is the best war offense team right now. And frankly, you want your Sabretooth to be big, right, on, on Weapon X. So, I, you know, he I brought him in and he was okay-ish. I mean, he was fine. He, you know, heals himself and spreads some bleeds. I mean, he's not great. Lady Deathstrike is much better. She's tech, which is another option that's hard to find good choices for. Other than legendary, this mutant choice uh, is you know reason you know there aren't a lot of great mutant choices, so I think Wolverine's reasonable. There's also Silver Samurai here for mutant, so I think to me that's the obvious choice. I would you know Doom right now I think is certainly worth it, particularly if you know he's somebody that people are using him you know at times in arena. You certainly use him a lot in war. He's useful in two different sections of the raid, although less needed in Mystic now. So he's a great choice, but I, I'm not sure he's worth the cost in, given all the other pressures here. Uh, Ghost, I'm leaving here because I do think she's going to have value in the next D Dark Dimension. She has something in her passive that gives offense down on all enemies uh, in Dark Dimension, which is really great. It cuts damage down by 50%. So if you bring her, she won't seem like she's doing anything that spectacular, but as long as she stays alive, she's reducing the damage you got incoming, which really helps your entire team. For Cosmic, there's an abundance of choices, like just a ton of choices, and a lot of them are mystic. So what I would say here is a lot of people are telling me Icarus and Cersei are amazing, and I'm going to bring them. Well, just realize that if you're going to bring Cloak and Dagger and Icarus and Cersei, you're going to have to make some cho some compromises somewhere because, you you know, characters like Doom and you got Adam Warlock here, you know, it's just there's a lot of mystic. Uh, characters that are good in the game right now. So just plan that out. They also use no health catalyst, but a lot of damage catalysts. So you've got to balance that out with characters that use that don't use as many damage catalysts or else you're going to run out of that. You just got to really plan your gear carefully at this point in time, given that teal gear in general is risk-free. Now, one question I've been getting from players is, hey, Philosopher, I'm not a whale. I'm free to play. I, I have enough teal gear to gear like one character. Should I just gear, gear up a character now? Well, <clears throat> it's a great question. Usually I would say focus on your city characters, gear up five city characters so you can go right from the first three nodes on to the next section. But if you're really slow in getting teal gear, I could see somebody in that circumstance who's like, look, I'm barely get, getting enough to do anyway. I'm not going to be in DD5 for a long time. I think it's reasonable to, ke to gear up a character like Kestrel and if you really need her every day, like if you're like relying on this character in raids and it's going to save you, you know, heals and cores and all that, I think it's a reasonable choice to make. But just understand you're slowing yourself down, right? Because you're bringing a character who's who's in a later section and who knows by the time you reach cosmic, you may want to go in a different direction and so on and so forth. But all of these characters are great. I ended up bringing Longshot and Shatterstar because I was racing and I needed to use my mutant gear to get you know get into Legendary quickly. You don't need to um, make the choice I did. I think they, they were fine and they did extremely well, as you saw from the videos if you watch. And you certainly should feel free to go back and watch any of my race videos if you want to see how different nodes are and how the enemies are. You could look for yourself and make up your own mind. But I will just say I thought you know Philovel is a good choice because she's bio and there's not a lot of great bio choices. Um, you know, I think all the rest of these characters will perform very well for you. Uh, you know, here's another, this is another miasma, 
um, you know, mystic character in terms of Silver Surfer, who I know performed well uh, for uh, another player who, who completed this early. Um, you know, these ch cheaper options here, um, I do, wh the reason I included them as cheaper options is, you know, I, I think Starler T'Challa will be a good standalone character. I don't think he's going to be amazing in raids, but I think he'll be, you know, very useful in raids. And I think he has a really unique kit with the ability energy steal. I think he's the best character from this patch solo. Uh, Ravager Stitcher has a health steal, which is always very good in Dark Dimension, and he's very cheap to gear. So I included them here. That may be part of your solution because there aren't a lot of great tech choices. If you don't gear up Ghost here, you know, you really, the choices are going to be like Lady Deathstrike, Misty Knight, uh, and then you got some legendary choices. And so for legendary, what I ended up doing is heavily on mutant and tech. Uh, it's hard though to do uh, all, you know, go all out on mutant here. I will say, but this is where you want to use your mutant gear in. You know, I've joked about Shocker being the MVP, but there's no question Omega Red was the top performer in Legendary. And I thought about giving Adam Warlock or some of the others, you know, a top performer thing. But these, this, what this means is just they're head and shoulders above some of the rest. And I really think, you know, Adam Warlock provided nice control, but in terms of stuns and ability block, but, but. Um, you also had the same level. You had ability box coming out of Omega Red and just tons and tons and tons and tons of damage with all the, the life uh, steal that he has on all three abilities. So he was a, an absolute beast. A lot of you, I think, will be tempted to bring in some of these other mutant choices. You got Phoenix and Jubilee. Um, I think Phoenix is a very good choice, particularly now that the rework uh, came sort of soft rework with, you do with the addition of Magic. If you do have that full team built up with Magic, and that's great because I think Phoenix is the sort of character that will be good enough in a lot of dark dimensions uh, in the future because she's just got that health steal. And every time she dies, the summon Dark Phoenix comes with, a, with her cooldowns ready to go and be able to do the health steal. But Adam Warlock was great. He's an expensive choice. He's a miasma and he's got five slots uh, of teal gear required. So when I misclicked on him, I was concerned, but he's, he's certainly proved to be great. Doc Ox, a no-brainer choice, though, here for tech uh, because he uses uh, tech gear and he performs really, really well. Very, very survivable. Shocker uh, is really underrated. I, I had thought Shocker was the MVP of DD4 Legendary. It really turns out in DD5 Legendary, he was great. <laughs> you know, Shuri, Shuri's another one who's underrated because the defense up she provides uh, reduces in incoming damage by 50%, and then she throws out deflects out of turn. So even when it's not her turn, if your enemies are, if your allies are starting to die, she's going to throw deflects out, which help keep them alive. In terms of bio choices, if you got extra bio gear, you could dump it here. I mean, Black Bolt's just okay. Uh, I think he's more useful in the meta by a long shot uh, than I Invisible Woman. I mean, I think he's an, on the outskirts of the meta. I kind of feel like all of these characters are more on the outskirts of the meta at this point, but we don't have many legendary choices that are worth bringing. And so I think Black Bolt's the better choice in terms of value outside of DD5, but Invisible Woman did really well in DD5 because she's the only cleanse amongst the legendaries. And then she provides offense down, which lowers incoming damage by 50%. So when I paired her with Shuri, I had a lot of success. You can go back in the videos and look that at that as well. All right, guys, I hope you like this. I hope this was helpful to you. Continue to plan ahead and use this, hopefully, as a guide for your roster, not this just through DD5, but if you haven't gotten to DD5 yet and you're working on your DD3 or DD4 teams, I think you could do a lot worse <clears throat> than to just look at these characters and try to get through DD3 and DD4 with a lot of these characters because you could use those characters, uh, you know, again, you'll have them already geared for the next Dark Dimension. All right, guys, if you like this video, smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. If you got comments or questions, leave them below or go to my Discord. We do a lot of discussion of dd5 choices and stuff on the discord there you can also go to my twitch stream and uh please uh, click on the amazon coin link below that does uh and buy amazon coins that does help support our channel